morning, everyone. Um, all right, I apologize in advance. My eyesight is not getting better with age, so I'm going to have to turn around and look at that occasionally to see what slide I'm actually on. Um, for those of you who haven't seen me before, um, my name is Leif. I joined Arm in 2005, got involved with the server software, and inevitably fell down the industry standards hole, Unify, API, and BIOS, and just booting in general which got me heavily involved with Linaro from mid-2012 onwards. So, been with Linaro 12 years. Weird. Um, started contributing to the Tianacore project in 2012, and in 2016 I became part of the stewards team that run the project. I'm also one of the maintainers for the uh, ARM portions. Uh, I went into an exciting little startup called Nuvia. Um, and led the application process of firmware team there, and then Nubi was acquired by Qualcomm, uh, and here we are. So, as, as Linda was saying this morning, um, I, I'm involved in the effort of cleaning up the uh, firmware stack on the laptop side these days. So, why am I here? Um, I used to present at nearly every Connect because I had something to say at nearly every Connect while we were getting all of the UEFI API stuff sorted. Um, but then we actually succeeded and made ARM boring. Um, so I hadn't had anything to say for a bit. And then COVID hit and conferences stopped. So I realized I hadn't, we hadn't actually had a talk about Tiana Core in like five years at least. Um, so I should probably do something. So. Ultimately, not a massive amount of things have happened, but it's been five years, so there's been some stuff, but I figured I'd just go through it. Okay, uh, there's usually some people who aren't familiar with Tiano Core and EDK2, so I'll give a brief intro. Um, Tiano Core is the open source project that maintains EDK2, the EFI development kit V2, which is the reference implementation of the UEFI specification. Um, as well as some adjacent code bases like EDK2 platforms and EDK2 test. Uh, EDK2 is also the reference implementation of the PI specification, which also comes out of the UEFI forum, but describes the internals of a firmware image rather than the external interfaces. Um, it's a collaborative project developed and maintained by people working on ARM, Loon, Arc, RISC-V, and Exodus X architectures and it has support for building using a large range of different tool chains, which means it has a hideously complicated build system. Um, we, have, we don't make releases as such, but for the last few years we've had uh, four scheduled stable tags that happen every year. Um, UEFI defines APIs and portable boot time interfaces for boot time software like memtest or running production testing, um, option ROMs and other firmware device drivers, and OS loaders, um, as well as runtime interfaces for operating systems. PI defines interfaces between components within the firmware image, but some of them can also be used in, in factory testing, and the specifications are available from there. Okay. Um, the actual code, the main repository is on GitHub. It holds the build tools, the industry standard code and definitions, virtualization target support, so like the QEMU um, port um, and common support code. Um, for various reasons, uh, some of the participating entities don't want the platform support code in the same repository. So we have a separate one called EDK2 platforms where the platform um, code lives. Um, and both of these repositories um, contain, with one or two minor exceptions, um, BSD two clause patent um, licensed code. And if you want to contribute anything, that's the license you contribute under. Um, because there are some drivers we don't get the source code for, um, we also have this EDK2 non-OSI repository where we can dump random blobs that you can then include in your builds. The project runs a 
set of discussion groups and, and mailing lists on edk2.groups.io. The main one is edk 2 Devel. Um, there are monthly-ish community meetings, but um, they're scheduled at times I'm generally unable to attend to be more convenient for Asia and uh, West Coast US. Um, there's also a not very frequently used IRC channel on OFTC. It's a lot more live than it was five years ago. Yeah, and other people randomly drop in as well. Okay, so what's actually happened in the last few years? Um, there's been some, like the, the, the bigger changes that have happened uh, is the, the whole build system thing and, and the helper scripts it was retargeted to support Python 3. Um, backwards compatibility with Python 2 is aspiration, but I don't think anyone's actually validating that anymore. And I don't know if we bother fixing it, if we come across anything. Um, OpenSSL is included as a sub-module, um, and since OpenSSL 1.1 was end of life last year, uh, we migrated to OpenSSL 3 uh, since the August release, the August stable tag last year. Uh, and more recently, we've had an additional crypto implementation, an alternative crypto implementation in the form of embed TLS uh, included as another sub-module. Um, and since I last spoke about Tiana Correct Connect, we've had RISC-V 64 and LuingArc 64 added to the um, supported architectures. Um, I mentioned that EDK2 can be built with many different tool chains. Um, so in the past, some of the compiler tool chains like Visual Studio, Visual Studio might still have this problem, I'm not sure. But certainly GCC before version 5.0 kept making the command line, it kept making it impossible to, basically the command line interface wasn't stable. So every single GCC version that flipped, uh, we needed to add a new profile to support. And then GCC stopped doing silly things and the interface was stable. So we didn't bother adding any new pr profiles for GCC, um, which meant that we left the profile called GCC 5 and then everyone thought you needed to use GCC 5 to build EDK2, and it was a horribly outdated project that had been completely abandoned. Um, so we fixed that last year. We um, um, dropped the numbering uh, altogether from the uh, profile name, and now we just have the GCC and GCC no LTO profiles for building without link down code gen. Um, and we also have new generic Clang Dwarf and Clang PDB uh, to replace the version Clang profiles. Uh, contributions, we used to have a much hated uh, Tiano Core contribution agreement. If you look at the Git history, that's in every single commit up to uh, in some point in 2019 um, when we switched to the BSD plot patent license, which gives effectively the same sort of submarine patent violation contribution protection. Um, then now we rely on the uh, uh, developer certification of origin, i.e. the signed off by tag, um, to people to promise that they're not doing the wrong thing. Um, if you want to contribute, there's a setup git script that sets up like sane and helpful um, defaults and, and give some macros um, that help with some things. Um, and there's also a, a, a git maintainer.py script to tell you who you should be CCing or, or copying on a given change based on what's in maintainers.txt. Um, up till now, contributions have been made on the EDK2 Devel mailing list, but we've been working for many years now to switch over to native GitHub PR mechanism. Um, it's kind of hampered by COVID and not having any face-to-face -face meetups for over four years. Um, the main outstanding issue we have is how do we maintain a useful code review history? GitHub does not care about that. Um, and frankly, we've gotten to the point where we need to make the switch. So we'll do that and then we'll try and figure out and get the uh, 
how we can archive the review history in a more useful way um, ourselves after the point. So that is going to happen directly after the 2024-05 stable tag in the next few weeks. Um, we, there used to be a really quirky and annoying part of uh, updating the UEFI specification, which was that while something is being discussed for inclusion in the specification, you're not permitted to publish any code or anything for it. It has to all stay inside the forum, um, which obviously made uh, preparing open source um, work for it very tedious. Um, so we drafted a what we call the code first process where we do the opposite. We prototype the feature in public and then we submit it for inclusion in the specification. Um, and um, there's a link down there to the, the, the process to follow in case you want to do that. Um, there's been various work on improving code quality and security. Um, Microsoft's uh, been very helpful to getting automated CI in place for the main repository. Um, they've also um, hooked in an Uncrustify tool to help doing an automatic style um, code reflowing and, and um, style compliance. Uh, and I don't think this has been formally decided yet, but it's we, we are in the process of migrating the security process itself to the GitHub, um, do you call it the InfoSec process? I don't know, that, that one anyway. And uh, th that's a link to the discussion about that. So EDK2 platforms um, started inside Linaro as open platform package. Um, we wanted to seed it with as much example code as possible, and we didn't really have any way to uh, delegate fine-grained access for maintainers. So we didn't necessarily purge platforms that uh, lost active maintainers, and stuff has sort of been rotting. Um, so we're going to, we've sorted out the access control aspect, um, so we started going through making sure that all the platforms in the tree have active maintainers and any that don't are going to be archived. And we've also started assigning, um, yep, started assigning more people to maintain their own platforms. And we'd like to start creating stable tags of EDK2 platforms as well um, to go with the main EDK2 stable tag. This obviously requires the active maintainers to test um, against EDK2 during code freeze and fix any failures. And platforms that end up broken, they will end up being archived and uh, moved away. Ultimately, we're looking at uh, using GitHub self-hosted runners so that people can hook their platforms into the upstream CI system so, we don't, so it doesn't become as much of a manual process. Um, final notes, I'll, I'll, I'll note it, nothing else. Um, Microsoft didn't like EDK2 the way it was being managed, so they decided to fork it. Um, it's called Project Moo. Um, they do a lot of useful new development in there, but they usually contribute it back to the original project. Um, and there's also an additional um, there's a Discord um, forum for talking to them, where sometimes random people drop in and ask generic EDK2 questions, so it's a bit like the RSE channel. Um, can be a useful resource to get hold of people. Right, I promised it wasn't going to be very exciting, that's all I had, but I definitely have time for questions if anyone has any. Tyler. Um. So you mentioned Microsoft has a CI system, and then you mentioned GitLab runners. Is that working? Like, how do, how do you test on the Linux platforms right now, or the non-Microsoft platforms? When, when I say we have automated CI, I'm not saying we have complete automated okay. CI. So we're doing some basic sanity checking, looking that it, the, the core stuff will still run on QEMU. 
Okay. But that's what I want to look into for the platform support is getting people to set up their own self-hosted runners. Like actual hardware targets? Yes. And, okay. Great. In the back. <laughs> you Race. Who had it? Who had the hand? Race. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, do you have any description for new SOC how to port EDK2 to them? Pretty much just some sort of guide for how to how to port. Slow. No. Um, and is there any plan for that? Yes. The, no. Uh, well, there's various documentation. That like th there's plenty of documentation around, but there isn't like a step to step. How do you create a new port? Um, I agree it would be a useful thing to have. And, and would it be also useful to say which one is the best one to follow? It would be, uh, and frankly, if one was a shining beacon, uh, that we probably would. But that gives good leads into, um, so Marchin's working on, we have a platform called SBSA Ref in QEMU that is there to be kind of an ideal platform. Um, and uh, that's my intent and Martin's intent is that that will become a good example for where to start from. Right, but but if you, I know I I'm not doing it right, but pretty much this is a if this is a full featured uh, platform support, that the thing what you need to do on new SOC is pretty much just to start to strip down things what you don't want what you don't have, which is which is very complicated process at the end. It would be much easier just to say okay, this is the minimum requirement what I need to get me to, I don't know, EDK shell, for example, which is pretty much, I don't know, memory setup, console setup, and so on, just the basic modules, uh, right? Generally, that level of setup isn't done in EDK2. That's usually, so EDK2 basically runs on top of TFA. So the kind of low-level stuff happens in TFA. And EDK2 is the thing that does your PCA enumeration and gives access to... Uh, to those devices. It means you are saying that the EDK2 it can use services from the TFA or can use a setup from the TFA? That's what you are saying? EDK, on, on ARM64, ARM, ARM um, EDK2 requires TFA. Right, it's just because it's running in EL2, right? It means TFA, yeah. TFA is in the EL3, it runs EL, EL2, so EDK2, but you need to write the drivers for that, right? You need to write a console driver for it, I expect, right? I mean, it's pretty much just step-by-step -step manual for new platforms would be, would be very yeah, useful. Yeah, I mean, stuff like this, there's some work that we need to do with um, improving some of the core PCI. Because what we find, especially in, uh, in the ARM world, is that the core PCI um, host bridge and root bridge implementations, um, they were designed for PCs, and often the ARM architectures uh, the ARM implementations have a bit more complex PCIe topology than what that can support, and then people end up needing to fork it. But ultimately, for things like that, you end up having to implement like a little shim library to, to bridge you between, um, to give the core implementation what, what it needs to be able to do standard PCIe enumeration and access across it. Okay, thank you. I think also that if you want to add new platform, then it depends what... At the first step will be get a TFA, right? Uh, output data to serial port, so you have basic started. And in EDK2, at start, anything with just serial port and output something. So then you have mem you initialize memory, you have serial port, you can run EFI shell. And next, you look at what we have in EDK platforms and follow. I am, I am, I'm probably not going to write documentation how I, how I did things in uh, QMES BSA because I am terrible at writing documentation. But when I, in my dealing with SBSA Ref uh, firmware, I mostly went through what was there already. And I have a session about 
SBA reference platform tomorrow at same time in session two room. Okay. I guess we're ready five minutes early. I'm here all week. Try the wheel.